If you're new to subwoofer boxes or new to speaker building, this video is for you. Now, if you're an old pro at this stuff, then keep watching and when you're done, drop some advice down in the comments for new box builders. A lot of you like to post pics of your builds in progress or images of your plans. And what I'm seeing is that some of you are making a mistake that's gonna make it harder to build the box, harder to make the box look good, and weaken the structural integrity of your subwoofer enclosure. Plus you're creating a lot of extra work for yourself. To illustrate this for you, here are some mock-ups in SketchUp. These aren't tuned to any particular frequency or designed for any specific subwoofer. These are just here to provide you some visuals so you can understand what I'm talking about. I like to use SketchUp because I'm just bad at drawing, so it's easier for me to do it on the computer. This box here is my kind of standard go-to design. It takes some extra tools to build, and I want to focus on simple enclosures, something you can build with a circular saw, a jigsaw, and a drill. We'll go back to this box and boxes with L ports coming out of the front in just a few minutes. So here is an example of an enclosure with subwoofers on the front firing forward and a slot port that fires out the side. If you're new to box building, this is the way to go. You don't have to mess with the extra complications of that L port. My friend Torch DIY has a video explaining what I'm talking about. He and I actually live stream on Mondays at 7.30 Central Time. You should tune in this Monday and check out the show. All right, so here's the mistake. The problem is that you're resetting your saw finch or your edge guide too often. Now I'm really fortunate to have a nice table saw, but before I bought a table saw, I made all of my cuts with a Craig rip cut or an edge guide. I've got a nice saw now and I would never have been able to upgrade to this nice saw if it weren't for the support of my patrons. So thank you to all of the Patreon gang with an extra shout out to my $25 patrons, Bo, David, Bam Bam, Dylan, and Baba. If you would like to support content like this, I'd love to see you over on Patreon. There's a link down in the video description. All right, back to this Craig rip cut. I strongly recommend this rip cut, especially if you're not ready to buy a table saw yet. And that's because if you're not using an edge guide of some type, you're making a huge mistake. Your cuts need to be square, your cuts need to be straight, and you don't want wobbly cuts. And if we're really being honest, most people just don't have the skill to run a circular saw down a pencil line without any wobbles at all. That takes a ton of practice. And even the most skilled woodworker is still gonna have the occasional wobble when making a cut. And these wobbles are going to end up causing big gaps in your enclosure. And hey, a wavy cut line is fine for construction work, but we need more precision for building speaker boxes and subwoofer enclosures. You know, when you're making a video like this, it's really easy to come across as preachy. And that's not my objective at all. The reality is that I've made so many mistakes when building things that I've just lost count. And if I can just share one or two things that I've learned and save someone out there a little bit of grief or a little bit of time, then I'll feel like I've accomplished something. All right, back to the main point. Uh, what I've done here is I've created a worst case scenario just as an illustration. The problem here is that almost every panel on this enclosure is a completely different dimension. Let me show you. The top and the bottom are the same size, 17 and a quarter by 30. The back is 29 and a quarter by 14. The sides are both 14 inches tall, but they're both a different width. And the brace is gonna be the same height as most of the rest of the pieces, but a different width. So every time you have to cut out a new piece, you've gotta either reset your table saw fence, or make a new measurement and reset your edge guide. Each time you do that, you introduce the opportunity to make a mistake. I'll show you the implications of that in a little bit, but first I wanna show you a better way. This example right here, the top, bottom, two baffles, and the back are all the same width, 30 inches. So you set up your fence or your edge guide just once and only once for those 30 inch cuts. Now, if you're using a clamp on edge guide, you might find yourself setting it up a second time, but in any case, you still wanna make sure you're minimizing the number of times you move that edge guide. From there, the top and the bottom are 17 and a quarter. 
So you set the fence to 17 and a quarter and make those cuts. The rest of the pieces are all 14 inches high, so you make all of those cuts at the same time. And here's a really important tip. You want that brace to share the same dimension as some other major component of the enclosure. For example, it might be the exact same size as the left-hand side, or if you've got a longer port going down the back of your enclosure, you want that brace to be the same size as the right hand side. Now let's look at the port itself. If you need a 20 inch long port, for example, you just cut this piece to 20 inches. Compare that to the other box, where in order to get a 20 inch port, you need to make a 19 and a quarter inch cut. Let me show you some numbers so you understand what I'm talking about. This box right here has nine different pieces, but only six distinct dimensions. This other box over here has the same nine pieces, but it has nine different distinct dimensions. That's 50% more, which means 50% more time setting up cuts and 50% more opportunities to make a mistake when you set those cuts up. A sixteenth of an inch too long here, an eighth of an inch too short there, and these mistakes will start to compound and add up. Let me show you what I mean. I've taken one of these boxes and I've randomly shortened or lengthened some of the pieces by about an eighth of an inch. We end up with an ugly overhang on the front. This back corner over here doesn't match up correctly giving us less glue surface so we have a weak joint back here and a greater chance the box is going to leak. The brace is too long and doesn't fit inside the box. Now the good news is that there are plenty of ways to salvage this mess. Carpet can cover up a lot of ugly mistakes. Corner 45s can strengthen a weak joint and prevent air leaks. Wood of course does have some give to it and you can bend it a bit and still get the pieces to fit together. And that's why I recommend that beginners use glue and screws for their enclosures. You'll have to pre-drill all of your pilot holes so it's a lot more work, but those screws are gonna help you force pieces together to give you a better seal. I personally like to clamp the pieces together before I drive brad nails. If nothing else, the clamps act as extra hands. Hands that don't bleed if you hit them with a brad nail. And of course you can use silicon to seal all the interior seams. But none of that's really needed if you just make straight, consistent, and accurate cuts in the first place. So if you get those right, you're gonna save yourself a ton of time. Back to this box here with the L port coming out of the front. For this enclosure, you need either a very steady hand with your jigsaw or a router to make that port cut out. So let's look at a slightly different L style port. The top and bottoms are the same dimension, but the sides are not. And this version has two port walls. Notice that the brace itself is shorter than the first port wall. The back here is a little bit less wide than the bottom. And over here in this spreadsheet, we see that we now have 10 pieces with 10 saw resets. And again, this is a worst case scenario. Let me show you a much better way. On this enclosure here, the back is the same width as the top and the bottom, and both sides are the same width. The brace is the same width as that first segment of the port wall. It's the same 10 pieces with seven saw resets. Now my preferred method has some extra advantages. Notice the brace. No matter which brace you use, it's gonna share common dimensions with at least one other component. It'll either be the same exact side as one of the sides or the same exact size as that first port wall. The back and the baffles are also the exact same dimensions. Again, the same number of pieces, but now we only need to reset for our cut six times. If you wanted to go with a sealed enclosure or an enclosure with a round port, you can get away with even less. The same is true for passive radiator enclosures. To learn about passive radiators, click on this video right here. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. Hit this button right over here to subscribe and I will see you on the next adventure.